Welcome back to another edition of Book of Jake. My name is Jake Abdullah. This is a podcast that talks to really interesting people, also and people who are involved in many uh, you know, uh, inspiring things. So today I thought I would get somebody who's done some, some, you know, I would say some extraordinary things. Uh, so without wasting any time, my guest today is Iqmil Fawitz, or he like to be called as If. Yeah. Well, otherwise known as intermittent fasting. <laughs> <laughs> you hold the national record for solo swimming in Malaysia and he's now also preparing for something even more incredible. I believe this is a world record. Huh? So he's going to be handcuffed. Handcuffed sounds a little bit erotic, but we'll get to that in a bit. Handcuffed swimming in the Straits of Johor. It's going to be for a, a distance of 10.5 kilometers. 10.1 until 10.5. Okay, so before we get into that... Um, Tell me details about how you got into swimming and what's making you do all this and, you know, the dangers and all that. And, yeah, take your time. Tell me about this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. When I was at a tender age, my my late father, he used to to, to bring me to Mersing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then he cast me into the water, into the open water when I was, what, a standard two or standard three. So that that was all it started when mm. I started to to swim in an open water. Mm. Until you know, until today... Were you a technical swimmer at that point or you just... Technical. Technical. technical uh, definitely technical. Okay. Because in order for us to swim in the open water by mm. hook or by crook, we mm. must know the technicalities. Mm. That's, that is second to none. Okay. Yeah? Okay. What was... So, uh, hey, by the way, he's 50 years old. Huh? So you're turning 50 next month, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So amazing. So you did this in 2015. You swam for 60... 65.34 kilometers. 65.3 yeah. uh, three kilometers, which is a national record. And yeah. from where to where? Uh, it was 2015 from Kuala Penyu to Prince Philip Park in Kota Kinabalu. Okay, so why, why did you pick that location? Because uh, I was there. Because I, 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 I was working there at the time. So... Uh, the reason why I did that swim in the first place because I wanted to leave a legacy to the Sabahan people. Okay. So the duration was 24 hours? 24 hours. In 24 hours and 30 minutes. So 24 hours, you are afloat in the open sea? Afloat in the open sea. That's yeah. really interesting. Okay, so before we get into the details of, of, of that, now, tell us about other things that you're doing in life and, and you know, in your career. And I know you are a bike enthusiast. You also, you have your own swimming, uh, swimming institute, academy, yeah. which, is, which is something that I want to get into. I've tried swimming, but I failed miserably. So okay. um, tell us about that. Yeah, okay. And right now I'm doing my um, my freelance uh, swimming as mm. a swimming coach. And also on top of that, I'm doing my uh, big bike rent company mm. with my few associates. And uh, I'm also venturing into aviation, mm. aviation industry. Yes, aviation industry with my associate. And From then at the same time, I'm having my own podcast. podcast. Yeah, I heard you got a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's, What's it it's still new. It's still new. That's all right. What's it called? Mine as well is very new. Yeah. <laughs> it is called uh, OK Jum Podcast. Mm. So it is, uh, it is a platform where uh, we wish we could provide for the athletes and also the corporate so they could symbiotic mm. you know, symbiosis with one another going okay. back to your your swim in 2015 it took 24 hours yes sir tell us about the experience sir, because I'm more interested in people who cut through thresholds of, of you know almost impossibility so it's 24 hours in the sea it's dark um, yes. you don't know whether there are sharks or not I don't know so and it's cold um, run me through that um, I believe in this, uh, Jake. Um, the most important is our mind, body, heart, and spirit. It has to be one, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. To my understanding, it has mm-hmm. to be one. So, especially when we talk about the ultra length, the ultra swim, mm-hmm. yeah? Because we are facing, mm-hmm. you know, there are so many creatures inside there, yeah? mm-hmm. in the water. So, we wouldn't know mm-hmm. what are waiting for us inside there. So, um, it is absolute essential for us to focus. It is called reticular activating system in our mind. Mm-hmm. So when we say, yes, no, we have to stay positive, optimist, so definitely we can do it. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you have strong determination, yeah, go, go get it, you know? Easier said than done. <laughs> I, I, I would tend to disagree here. It's easier said than done because you, I know you're saying mind over matter and mamba mentality and, and, and stuff like that. I understand, but... Some people can't even fast for 
24 hours. You know what I'm saying? No, it, yeah. it's there's, there's always some voice in the head that will mitigate that wh- whatever uh, process yeah. you were talking about. But 24 hours, I am sure that during that period, you would have wanted to give up so many times. Yeah. So what made you not give up? The the mental game plays absolute essential in order for us to to go to the great land. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we must always remember. No blame, no excuse, no denial in order for us to become a victor. Mm-hmm. So if we truly understand about that part, so nothing is possible, mm-hmm. Jake. Yeah. So discipline, discipline, discipline. Discipline is absolutely essential. So how did you regard. train for that, 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 that period? Were you already doing distances similar to that? Or do you do prolonged swims? Or Because... You don't know. How, how do I swim 65 kilometers in 24 hours if you don't try or at least attempt to, to yes. reach the threshold? So how did you do it? Yeah. At least you must spend a day, six hours, six to eight hours mm. in the water. Open so water. Open water. Mm-hmm. Open water, regardless open water or in the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, you, you need to sacrifice your time. Mm-hmm. Was there any part during your swim that you felt that your life was in danger or you felt that, oh, you know what? Um... I don't think I'm going to make it or, you know, what malu lah like that. But, or, but was, do you feel at mm. any point that I'm going to give up? And you, you have to be honest about this because yeah, we yeah. all go through phases of this in our life. Yeah. During night time, of mm. course, during the dusk. Mm. I think, d- d- yeah, during the dusk, I think. Mm. The transition from day to night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was where, uh, no, I, I, I was almost sick to the back teeth, mm. fed up. Mm. Because because of the the transition, it was mm, so mm. It, it was a bit much spooky, you know, mm, <laughs> scary. Mm, 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 mm. Because I could I, I could barely see my my hands when I stroke. Mm. You know, during the day, daytime, we could see our hands mm. in the water, even though the water is murky. But we could still see our hands. Mm. But during the dusk and the night time, wow, that was very challenging. Especially when we stroke, when I stroke, I could you no, know, I I noticed I could saw a pair of eyes, you no. Know? <laughs> In the water, you was know? it your eyes or something supernatural? Uh, no, 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 not supernatural. I think no, 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 no way. No fish, big fishes. <laughs> some, of some, some gin eye. <laughs> like that, eh? No, no. As far as I'm concerned, no. no. Okay. You've been swimming for just say like for 18, 19, 20 hours. What did you consume? What did you eat? Do you eat anything? Do you carry anything? Was there people beside you? Was there a boat beside you? Ah, oh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. okay. Uh, so uh, during the swim fit. So, uh, swim, swim attempt. So mm. I had a uh, few boats, escort mm. boats, mm. okay, by the firefighters, by the police department, okay. by the navy. Mm. So they were the one who who whom responsible to give my sustenance mm-hmm. when I asked for it. Yeah. So, so what did you consume? I consumed the liquid energy, mm. liquid energy, and also some some uh, edible fruits. Uh, mm. Easy, easy to consume fruits. Mm. Yeah, consumable fruits like uh, dates, mm-hmm. uh, some bananas, high uh, carbohydrates. Yes, yes, here. exactly. And then some some grapes. Yeah. I hate to ask you, but did you have to piss in the water? <laughs> That's a question that needs to be asked. You're okay, 24 okay. hours in yes, the, yes, in the exactly. sea. You must have had to ease yourself in the water. Yeah. Right? To be frank, yes, uh, many times. Uh, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expose to anyone else. Okay. Yeah. You're trying to attempt handcuffed and leg cuff. This is going to be a world record. And yeah, exactly. how is it a world record? Is this Guinness Book of World Records or...? Uh, okay, so uh, it will be in the Guinness World Book of Records. Mm-hmm. I, uh, um, it is inevitable. It is compulsory for me to make sure that the legs and and, and the hands are cuffed. No, handcuffs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I will be swimming approximately 10.1 until 10.5 kilometers. Mm. How long do you anticipate this takes? Uh, according to my to my calculation, so it will take approximately, I think, six hours. Six, yeah, six to seven hours. For, to swim 10 kilometers. And 10 what, kilometers. Kind, what kind of stroke do you, I, I, seriously, I, I can't swim, I can't even float to save my life, but what kind of technique would you use to... So, uh, my hands will, will, will be carved uh, behind. behind, behind okay. my back, okay. And then so does my legs. So, mm-hmm. I will be swimming like a dolphin motion. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll be swimming like like a dolphin. Mm-hmm. So, I will be using my, my legs more. Mm-hmm. Because because my hands are carved, so mm-hmm. I won't be able to use my hands at all. Mm-hmm. So, I will be, you know, I will be able to use my legs, of course. But mm-hmm. legs, the foot must be close to one another because mm-hmm. it is carved. Mm-hmm. And then 
my motion would be like like a dolphin. Mm-hmm. So I've never heard of people trying to do this, and I, I want to know why are you doing this actually? You know, I'm very curious and I'm very intrigued by people who try to try to surpass their natural <laughs> ability. Is this one of these um, uh, situations where you want to outdo your capabilities, or is this something that you want to do to inspire people to do, or? This is you're just testing yourself. Like like me, at 59 years old, I do everything that people say I can't. You know, so this is me. Okay. You know what I mean? So I've done things that this is, for my age, this is ridiculous. So I want to, you know, ask you, you, why are you pursuing this? I love doing this. And then the, for, for the people, of course. I mm-hmm. want to inspire people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's nothing impossible in this world. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you just, when, when you take the plunge, just go literally. for it. Literally. Yes, <laughs> literally. Go for it. Go for it, you know? So, and then the second part is discipline. You know, mm. Discipline. Yeah, and you, you need to be perseverant. Like, yeah, exactly. Also. Perseverance. So, exactly. there's another part to this. How many kids do you have? I got three kids. Three kids, okay. Yes. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah. and your wife is okay with you risking your life? To be frank. To um, be very, okay, let's be very honest. Okay. I'm sure she hates this. <laughs> yes. Or are you doing this to get away from your wife? <laughs> To be frank, no. No, no okay, no, I'm just no. kidding. But but <laughs> yeah, yeah. who would allow their husband to go out and risk their life like this? She hates, not to say she hates, but she was a bit much worried, of course, because she's mm. his wife. But mm. I told her, no, if I don't do this, I'll die. Mm. Because this is me, you know? Good point. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, thank you. And then, and how old are your kids? Uh, they are you know, the, the eldest, uh, t- uh, 14, mm-hmm. the second, 13, mm-hmm. and then the youngest, um, 9. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really want okay, them to Let me to ask focus. you a question. Yeah, sure. If your son's 18 and he says, calls you Papa, is it? Papa. Dad. Uh, dad. Dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, Dad, uh, I, I want to go and swim the open water and break the record. Would you allow him? No way. No. You see, that's my point. So, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Uh, These are usually thing- people do these things because it's a childhood stigma or some uh, <laughs> generational programming they want to do. They want to outdo something. So tell me about your your growing up. Did you have a strict father? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's very strict. He was a very strict father. Yeah, so yeah, you, exactly. is this your way of actually proving to him that you were better than what he anticipated? Yeah, because because he was a sportsman before. Mm. Oh, okay. So I think uh, it, it is a good point, uh, Jake. Mm. Yeah, when you said that, you no, know, perhaps in in in, in myself You're though, seeking I, acknowledgement. Yes, yeah, seeking father. acknowledgement, which is, which is fine. Yeah, exactly, just, exactly. Yeah, which is a very good way of actually you know in, impressing onto yourself and improving yourself. Now coming back to the financials of this, for you to do something like this, how much would it cost actually? And are you funded by the government? Are you funded by GLCs or nobody cares? Or, or are you? Okay. Are you? Do you come from? Do your father leave you a lot of money? Or, <laughs> I'm just curious, like. Okay, mm-hmm. curiosity kills a cat, yeah. Mm-hmm. But but I really love that that mm-hmm. questions. Mm-hmm. Okay, to be frank, I really have no clue mm-hmm. where the money will come from, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty certain uh, there are quite numbers of wealthy people out there. You no know, corporations, mm-hmm. they are willing to create. No, let us create a uh, history together. Mm. So fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, I'll but what have you been doing to to sort of solicit for, for funds? Have you have you started to promote this? Do you have a timeline for where this is going to happen? Perhaps somebody will watch this podcast, uh, inshallah, and, and, inshallah. and help. But how do they reach you, and how do they um, go about this? So the swimming will take place when next year, mm. next year, uh, June on June. Mm. Yeah, that is my plan. Now I wouldn't know who will be who will become the, the sponsors. Mm-hmm. But to be frank, no, mm-hmm. uh, we, we are going to the maximum length to mm-hmm. clinch. Okay, so how much do you think this will cost? This whole this whole um, endeavor of yours. Mm, plus minus, according to my calculation, initial calculation, around two hundred sixty thousand. If I'm mistaken. Two sixty thousand. Two sixty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's uh, one thing I want to ask you. What is the significance of the handcuff? Is it just because it's going to be difficult, or mm, is it some kind of message? Uh, no, 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 no. Handcuffs because b- because of the current record, ten kilometers. So, okay, so you just no. want to break it by to break a record? Do you need to to outdo it by a certain quantum? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Inshallah, you get this done by June. Um, is Inshallah. there anything that you'd want to share for some some people who are 
who are finding themselves. I actually believe that stories of inspiration, like I'm actually very intrigued by people who can outdo themselves to me. Let's say I'm a big fan of like Kobe Bryant. I'm a big fan of, of, of uh, Nim Spooja who did 14 Peaks. I'm a big yeah. fan of people who do stuff like this. Is there something that you can share that will inspire future generation? Or maybe even if you can intrigue one person to do better than, you know, like once in a while somebody messages me and says, hey, Jake, I love what you're doing. Is there something that you'd share and you you don't want to encourage people? What are you? What do you really want in life? So you ask yourself that part first. And then when you have taken the plunge, when you have decided what do you really want, so be persevere. Never forget your your decision, what you have decided in life. Mm -hmm. So go for it. So turbulence happens, uh, def definitely will happen because we are, after all, we are just a human being. Be yeah. perseverance. But, but I have one question. You know, you only know what you know and I keep telling people this. You only know what you know. Mm -hmm. So if you know what you know, that means you are limited by those short-sighted limitations also. Okay. So how do we go beyond. up and beyond to know what we can do? Like for me, it's always been because of my faults. You know, I've learned many Think, things because I've learned from my faults. You know, okay. was there a point in your life where you took a stumble and you picked yourself up? Definitely mm -hmm. failed. And, you know, and what was it? Uh, especially in, in in doing my business. You know, mm -hmm. business. So I invested in resort. I had my own resort. I had boats, but flunked. You know, mm. <laughs> so. So from there, I have learned. I've learned. I've learned. Uh, no, I, I, I had my experience from there. Mm -hmm. You know, because because I love doing business. You, you know, and you will have this thought: What am I doing this? You know, what was the purpose of me doing this? Doing this drill? You know, uh, so so if you could do that, God willing, you will succeed in life. That's great advice. So, how do we people reach you? Is uh, on your social media, and how, do you have a social media? And and how do people reach you? And if there's a, I will leave your your contacts uh, here in case there's a client who wants to sponsor Thank you. But you. other than that, how do people reach you? Uh, they can reach me, uh, reach out to me through my social media, my FB, Ikmel Fawes. Just type Ikmel Fawes. Mm -hmm. So. You will be able to reach me out to uh, through Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, through FB, LinkedIn, uh, and also LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, fantastic. So thanks for being on the podcast. Really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank also, you, guys, Jake. if you want to pick up my book, Book of Jake, it's at www.bookofjake.my. Simple book, 39 bucks, 90 cents. Just stories of my life. Sorry, I, the camera is here, actually. The stories of my life and and quick anecdotal stuff that you can pick up. Also, thanks for being the podcast. Thank you, Jake. I'll put up all your details. And when you do this, 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 uh, this uh, non-stop 10 and a half kilometer handcuff behind your, this fascination with handcuffs is actually quite sexual, but I'll not get into that. <laughs> oh um, um, we will definitely try to support you on radio, okay? So thanks for being on the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you, okay?